All right, guys, in this example, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Up until now, the other examples would say, solve the following trigonometric equation on the interval or in the interval from zero to two pi. So that was a restricted area. So on the unit circle, for instance, if you kind of visualize it that way, it wants to know about the possible angle, angle measures that would make that equation true, such that the smallest angle is at zero radians, and you can select from all angles between zero and two pi. And I'm gonna put an open circle here, and then I'm putting a closed circle here. So the zero radian is included, if you remember when we did less thans and greater thans and inequalities last year. And then here at the open circle, we have a two pi, which might look like an O, sorry, like a zero, but it's an open point at the end. And that's where we got this interval notation from. This means included, this means excluded, right? Um, I guess I'll put an L for both. Or the other way we wrote it looked like this, two pi had a theta is less than two pi, theta is greater than or equal to zero. Or if you remember really to break that down from last year, if you had a number line, it might've looked like this and then you shaded in between. So it's like I took this number line and I kind of wrapped it around the circle. That's really what was going on. But this example is not restricting us. Since this example is not restricting us, we can go around and around and around in this direction forever, and we can also go around in the other direction forever. We'll start this the same way though, so what can we do to start this problem? What would we do first? We're gonna start it exactly how we did the others. So we'll start by doing which two steps? Any ideas? No one? Go ahead, you can say. You can just shout out. Would you add one to each side? Okay. Yeah. Add one is the first thing. And then after that, what would you do? Divide by two. Yep. Thank you, thank you. And then divide by two. So then we have a one and divide by two. There we go. So we end up with cosine theta equals one half. Sorry, a little messy. I'll rewrite it right here. Then hopefully we're getting better at knowing that cosine and sine correspond to parts of the ordered pairs on the unit circle. Which part of the ordered pair does cosine correspond to? Is it the x value or the y value? Go ahead, Jeremiah. The x. Yeah, it's gonna be the x value in the ordered pair. All right, now the x value in the ordered pair, think about the x axis. I wanna know which angles, we're solving for angles, Let's start it the way we did the others. Which angles between zero and two pi in one revolution, in one period? A period is um, the length of um, an interval where it takes something to start repeating itself, okay? So zero to two pi, the period is two pi in length. So which angles have the cosine equal to a half or have an x value of one half? So you're gonna think over here. So you wanna give me one of those angles. Go ahead, Sharon. Pi over three. Pi over three, good. Up here, pi over three, there's the one half. If that's out one unit, the unit circle is a radius of one, that's one half. Pi over three is one angle. Theta equals pi over three. Now I'm gonna leave a little room this time. Usually I would just write and blank. I'm gonna leave a little room and I'm gonna write it to the side. What's the other? I'm just gonna go here and put that for a visual. Um, to spell, what is another angle? Not overlapping pi over three, but somewhere else on this picture where cosine, five. go ahead. Five pi over two. Yes, five pi over three, perfect. Now, <clears throat> those are two answers. The directions say solve for all, all possible. This little drawing here where I said we can go around and around and around and infinite number of times in either direction, either positive or negative, tells me, and here's the five pi over three, sorry, tells me that there's a lot of angles that land in these spots. These are just the two that happen to be on the classic standard unit circle. So I need to so find some way to 
write it out where I'm not just giving you two answers, this and this. I want a way where I'm gonna be generalizing and explaining as concise as possible all of the answers that land in these two spots. So does anybody have any suggestions on how we could go about doing that? I know Anna asked some good questions. Maybe what she said helped you come up with an idea. It could be like a real slap dash mod podge kind of smash it all together thing where you're like describing it with words. Maybe you could describe it using, you know, a little bit of uh, algebra. How would you describe all angles that land there? Or how would you describe all angles that land there? What could we say or what could we do to find all of those angles? Anybody have a clue? Do you add it to like, um... We're gonna add. What did you want to add, Anna? You started to say. You um, think back. We just said it. Two pi. And so okay. So two pi. If I add two pi to this angle right here, let's start there. This angle in standard position starts at zero and sweeps counterclockwise to be positive, and lands right there. So Anna is asking if we should add two pi. So if I pick up right from here where you are and I add two pi to it, you do not land at two pi because by adding two pi, you add a full revolution and you land at that same spot again. And every time you add another two pi, boom, we land there again. Boom, we land there again. We're gonna go around and around and again. Same with the five pi over three. I can add two pi, I can add two pi to it, but Anna started saying something else. Here, I'm just adding two pi once. So that really gives me one answer. This would actually give me seven pi over three if I found a common denominator and added, it would just tell me seven pi over three. But I wanna say, okay, we wanna add two pi zero times and just get pi over three. I wanna add it one time or two times or three times or four times or five, every number of times. And not only do I wanna add it, I also wanna add the negative of it or subtract it and that'll get me every angle. So Anna, you started saying something else after you said two pi. What was it that you were saying? Oh, I just said like two pi n. Okay, so I usually use the letter n myself and some books might use like k. Every teacher might use a different variable. What is the n for? Okay, so you know that it belongs there from somewhere, right? But you might not know why. So n, you have to basically add on to this answer we could write it with words for now and in the future i'll show you some abbreviations where n represents you have to add this or your answer won't be right where n represents an integer so whether it's there or there who remembers what an integer is this will be the last piece of this answer just uh, to add to like notes I feel like integer is one of those words that scares everyone, but it's, it's really like not that. Say it again. It's like any whole number. Okay, we got the word whole number. Good, Morgan, yeah. So it's like a whole amount of something. So a whole number could be one, two, three, four. Also for a whole number, let me throw some more vocab here. If you really, every, all these number sets have their own name, definition. The way I used to remember what whole numbers were when I was in high school was the middle of the word whole is like an O, that's your zero. So the whole number start at zero and count up from there. Zero, one, two, three, dot, 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 right? Dot, dot, dot means you keep going. So you'll remember the middle of the word whole is a whole and that whole is a big fat empty zero and you start there. So Morgan's right that there are whole amounts right? The way we would describe something not being 0.2 of something or a half of something. So zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. So by that so far, we're adding two pi on once or twice or not at all or three times or four times and we're hitting this angle over and over and over and over again and getting all those answers. 
But I mentioned we also want to go the other way. And really, this does take care of it. So what could we add to Morgan's definition for integers to help us go, ooh, sorry, <laughs> to help us go clockwise instead of just counterclockwise? What do the integers also include? Not just these, but what else? Go ahead, Emerson. Negative numbers. Yes. Integers actually include the negatives as well. So I'm just going to go backwards a little bit over here. That's why I left that room there. And in front of this, I'll put that dot, dot, dot. It's called an ellipses. I'll put that there as well. So what this does for us is it basically says any angle in, in simplest way mathematically as possible, any angle that lands right here, any angle that overlaps pi over three, all angles co-terminal to pi over three, okay? So I will even put, let's see over here. I'll put a little note here with quotes around it. All angles co-terminal, in this case, it's what this means. We have to watch out for this, but co-terminal to pi over three or five pi over three. And we should all remember the word co-terminal from much, much earlier in the unit. Co-terminal angles terminate together so they finish or land in the same place. Okay, so if you're playing a game when you were a kid that had like the spinner and you would flick the spinner and it would spin around. So if you land in this, like, say this is blue, red, green, yellow, whatever, you're playing Twister, I don't know. So you flick the thing, spins around. If it lands in the same spot all the time, I don't know, maybe it spun a lot when, um, when Justin flicked the spinner, but then Kiara flicked it, it didn't spin that much and it still landed there. But then, you know, Algenis flicks it and he flicks it the other direction, but it also lands there. There's a lot of ways to get to that same answer. So this is what's to come. We're not quite going to write these answers yet. Today, we're going to stay focused on just writing the answers between 0 and 2 pi. But I just wanted to kind of show you a little early. This is what they mean when they say all answers. And that's why I changed it, where we just kind of list, you know, just that and that. Boom, you're done. But when it says all possible, I'm going to highlight that in yellow. For all possible solutions. Or if they don't specify between 0 and 2 pi, it's really the same thing. That's when we do this solution here with plus 2 pi n. Okay? We'll elaborate on that in the next part of this lesson. But that's it for now. This is number 13 in our guided notes packet but it's a good example to do nonetheless, all right? So if, if you rewatch this in the future, if it makes sense, or watch it for the first time in the future, if it makes sense, you could give it a thumbs up. And if you're like, I'm confused, give me more examples of this, put a thumbs down on it so I know we need more examples, okay?